The manga begins with a huge, three-faced demon spreading chaos in the city, destroying and killing whatever comes in front of it. Evacuation announcements are being made while people are screaming and running for their lives. While attempting to escape, Yuki, a small child, steps on a stone and falls. Before his mother could pick him up, the monster got to him and just as it was about to eat Yuki, our savior enters the scene. The rooster snatches Yuki as he was about to enter the demon's mouth and lands on a rooftop. Angered by the way demons have always had their way, he warned him that every one of their kind is going down. As the rooster charged towards the demon, the scene breaks with the words, This is the story of how one rooster saves the entire humanity. About a year ago, our hero, who goes by the name Cluck, is living in a farm with a female chicken, without any food or shelter problems but deep down, something is bothering him. Something didn't feel right to him, so he decides to leave. Then we witness a heartbreak scene where the hen tries to stop Cluck from leaving but Cluck tells her that he was not born for peace and quiet. Instead, he was born to wander and whatever he had with her was just his moment of weakness. Cluck traveled to the center of city looking for a purpose to dedicate his life to. Night passed and now Cluck was feeling a bit hungry however, getting food for a sigma rooster like him was no issue. He picks a stone in his mouth, throws it up, kills a bug and feasts on it, like a boss. Then he takes a moment to appreciate the sweet fragrance and slightly bitter flavor of his breakfast. While passing through a park, Cluck shares how he is not very fond of children, given how rude, stubborn, and loud they are. Meanwhile, two little girls approach Cluck. They found Cluck to be a very cute chicken and tried to be nice to him by offering him the fried chicken in their hand. Yes, they really did that. Cluck was shocked at their audacity but before he could act, his neck was grabbed by two boys. The girls tried to rescue him but were scared away by the boys. As the boys were discussing if they should eat Cluck themselves or let the cat eat him in case he wasn't good for their health, Cluck was irritated by their conversation and decided to free himself and run away as he had no time to waste on them. The stubborn boys started to chase Cluck and were not giving up so Cluck decides to enter the house where an old man was watering his plants, hoping he would send away those rude kids. The boys asked old man to give them the rooster, saying that it belonged to them. Old man looked at Cluck as he was shaking his head, negating the words of those boys so the kind old man sends away the boys, saying that it's his rooster who sometimes leaves his yard and to sound more believable. He pretended to scold Cluck by advising him to never leave the yard again. The boys went away and even though they realized that the old man was lying, they couldn't do anything about it. As they walked a few streets, a smashing sound came from behind and there it was, a huge hand, crushing the whole house with just a grab. Meanwhile, the old man presented Cluck with a plate of brown rice, corn and shisho leaves and Cluck was shocked by seeing such a bountiful feast. He wasted no time to have the meal of his life and old man was glad that Cluck liked it. As Cluck was eating, old man begins to share his thoughts of how his wife used to feed the sparrows that visited their yard and that he should have retired early from teaching to spend more time with his deceased wife. Old man apologized for bringing up his past but due to some reason. He felt like he could trust and share anything with Cluck. That's when they heard the screams and rumbling sound of the house that was crushed. This creepy-looking huge monster with a large head and five fingers for his legs started spreading chaos. Apparently, he had to kill a certain number of humans to process some paperwork of his demon realm. The two kids from before were running away until one of them slipped and fell. Upon seeing this, old man rushes to his aid and just as the monster was about to crush both, Cluck charges towards the monster and strikes his leg with such speed that the monster missed old man and Hiroshi, the kid who fell. By having the monster's attention to himself, Cluck, angered at how he tried to kill the old man, decided to give the demon a taste of his own medicine. Both the boys and old man were shocked on seeing how Cluck just saved them and is now threatening the monster to kill him. The expressions of Cluck were filled with bloodlust and his comb, burning with rage. This is where we are shown a little flashback of Cluck's memories where his sister was killed by a monster and Cluck was too weak to save her. His sister, Sarah, screamed for help but there was nothing Cluck could do at that time. This is why Cluck took it upon himself to erase all the monsters from this world. With this dreadful memory in his mind, Cluck stormed towards the monster who tried to get a hold of him, but Cluck was too fast for the monster's reaction time. Monster tried his best but could not match Cluck's speed. Cluck then ran around the monster to confuse him and just when he looked somewhere else, Cluck jumped up towards his head and forced the monster to throw slaps at himself like you do when there's a mosquito sitting on your face. Cluck, obviously, dodged again and went for the monster's eyes and pecked. This not only caused a lot of pain to the monster but also momentarily blinded him. Cluck decided to use this window to finally deliver the killing blow. By inhaling as much air as he could, Cluck, with his full force, screamed at the monster, cock a doodle doo The frequency of his voice was so great that old man and the boys were forced to cover their ears and the glass windows of houses nearby broke down. The monster's misery was obvious from his expressions, and something strange started happening to the monster. His face started to get swollen and ultimately, it burst. 
old man and the boys couldn't believe their eyes. A rooster just defeated a monster almost 20 times his size and while they were processing that final blow, it finally hit the old man. He suspected that this is what people call resonance. It basically occurs when the frequency of one's voice matches the wavelength of an object and causes it to shatter into pieces. However, to match a wavelength of a monster, that too by a mere rooster was shocking. They thought to himself just who this rooster is. Meanwhile, Cluck approached the dead body of monster to inspect his neck. The monster who killed his sister had a mark on his neck that was something like small e. Turns out, this wasn't the monster Cluck had been looking for as there was no mark. The fight had caused a lot of mess, especially with the bits of that monster spread everywhere. Even the yard of that old man was destroyed. Cluck picked up a broom in his beak and poked old man's leg with it, showing his intent to help in cleaning up the mess. Cluck, old man and the boys spent the entire evening cleaning up the mess and just as they threw the last garbage bag away while praising how a rooster defeated such a big demon, they looked behind and Cluck was gone. His job in this town was done and he, a born wanderer, decided to leave this town and move on to the next one, hoping he did enough to pay back the old man. The demon was defeated, and the mess was cleaned up therefore, no business was left unfinished. Before moving on to the next town, Cluck remembered how he left the hen in tears earlier today and felt guilty about that, so he decided to go to her first and apologize. However, when he reached the farm, that hen had already found another rooster and was giving him the time of his life. Cluck didn't expect such a quick move on but instead of confronting her, he turned around and set his path towards the next town. Some visuals of different animals like lions, elephants and even a gorilla are seen hinting that this arc will be taking place in a zoo. A small girl, standing at her toes, holding the grill is adoring the rooster standing on a rock in front of her. Yes, a rooster in the zoo, and not just a rooster it is, in fact, Cluck. Cluck, with his usual serious and arrogant expressions as if he has never smiled in his life, was staring back at the girl. The girl calls out her brother to show him the rooster, but that boy shuts her up saying that it might be some southern bird as there's no reason for a rooster to be in a zoo. Meanwhile Cluck was finding that boy's face somewhat annoying. The boy then proceeded to show that it was not just his face that is annoying but also his attitude. He started throwing peanuts at Cluck to mock him and enjoy his misery. Cluck, on the other hand, being the Sigma rooster he is, caught all five peanuts and instead of eating them, he put them to a better use. He threw back all those right at the boy's face, giving him the lesson of his life to never ever mess with a rooster again. Cluck then turned around and started moving towards the pond where birds were casually enjoying with each other while thinking how people like that boy should not be given free will. Upon seeing the birds fooling around, Cluck was disgusted by their carefree attitude as he was someone who likes to risk his life. Seeing Cluck by the side of pond, the birds called Cluck to play with them as well, but our arrogant Cluck refused to join their childish activities. However, those birds did not take no for an answer and threw Cluck into the water and started splashing water onto him until they heard the cry for help. These cries were from Cluck who was did not know how to swim and was actually drowning. The birds rescued Cluck out of the water and apologized and once Cluck got back into his senses, he covered his crying for help by calling this style, the Cluck Stroke. Our rooster knows how to keep his chin up. Before the birds could say anything, an old bird, Xena came to Cluck's aid and sent away these naughty birds to entertain the customers and leave Cluck alone. Xena asked about Cluck's health to which Cluck thanked him for the care. Three days ago, Cluck was found soaked and unconscious in front of the zoo gate by some birds who picked him up and took him to Xena. Xena provided Cluck a safe hidden place to rest where even the zookeepers would not find him. Cluck proceeded to tell Xena that he was patrolling the area as he sensed the presence of a monster when it started raining and the hairy caterpillar he had for breakfast messed up his health. As Cluck has just woken up, after three days, he had not eaten anything, so Xena provided him a rare feast of Brazilian grasshoppers that are not usually found in this area. Sigma Cluck couldn't accept such valuable gift, so he refused saying that the only thing he will be accepting is his good feelings. Xena was impressed and just as he was about to eat them himself, Cluck stopped him from taking it back by saying that if Xena is insisting this much, which did not happen, he would gladly eat them. Xena was not so impressed now. With the same serious and arrogant face, Cluck feasted on those grasshoppers and once he was done, he asked Xena if he was born in Brazil to which he answered yes and told Cluck that he would often miss the view of sunset reflecting on the Amazon River that he used to watch with his little sisters. Cluck inquired the reason of him coming to Japan to which he shared that around 18 years ago, he was put into a constricting cage to appear before customers every day, which isn't what birds like but one day he realized that all the customers who looked at him smiled with happiness and seeing them happy made him happy. Cluck was surprised, internally though as his facial expressions never change, asked if he had no bitterness towards humans. Xena truthfully answered that he did have some bitterness, but it didn't matter to him as he had formed a family in this zoo where everyone supports each other and encourages each other. This family is irreplaceable to him, and everything here is what he holds close to his heart. 
Out of nowhere, destruction and panic noises started, and their conversation was cut short. A monster had appeared, and chaos had spread everywhere. People and animals were all running away from this four-legged, six-armed, caterpillar-shaped ugly huge monster. This is the same monster that Clock had sensed three days ago. Xena was petrified by the sight of this monster who just punched the glass roof of Bird Cage and broke it down. Shattering of glass brought Xena back to his senses and before Monster could attack again, Xena charged towards the monster hoping to save his precious family. Xena tried to hurt the monster by attacking through his beak but even after multiple blows, it was his beak that had started to form cracks. The sight of seeing Xena throwing away his life to protect his family moved everyone and just as they were about to come to his aid, the monster smashed Xena down to the ground. The monster then started punching the cage with all six hands and just as the birds realized that they cannot be saved, something hard struck the monster's forehead. That hard blow was delivered by our hero, Cluck. The birds were surprised how their small, stranger guest is taking on such a big monster, that too alone. Monster was agitated by this and decided to finish Cluck with a single punch, however, Cluck dodged and ran up his arm and got right in front of the monster's face. The anger on Cluck's face on what the monster did to Xena and seeing Cluck up front petrified the monster and before he could react, Cluck used the resonance power and screamed right at his face. Again, the monster's face started to swell and ultimately burst. Cluck had, yet again, defeated a monster with ease. Everyone gathered around the injured Xena who was now taking the last breaths of his life. Cluck informed Xena to rest easy as everyone was saved, and Xena smiled and thanked Cluck for saving his family. Then the emotional scene follows where all the birds are crying while witnessing Xena's last moments, especially the naughty trio who threw Cluck into the water. In his last moments, Xena remembered his sisters, Lana and Alina and how he wished to see the sunset with them one more time. With this, Xena closes his eyes and rests in peace. Cluck pays his respect and takes one of his feathers and promises to pass this on to his sisters as a keepsake and tell them that their brother fulfilled a praiseworthy role in Japan and died happily. With that, Cluck started to do what he always did, move on to the next destination, or what he planned to do but Xena pulled a final prank on him. The grasshoppers he fed Cluck earlier didn't suit him and Cluck started to lose his consciousness, hence extending his stay for another two or three days. Then we see some visuals of an ocean and the beach with some tubs flowing towards the land. Obviously, Cluck is in one of the tubs, sitting casually, with his serious facial expressions, waiting to reach the land. Some humans were diving into the ocean when they found these tubs and brought them, to the shore, along with Cluck. Meanwhile, the fishes in the water were swimming casually, bored of having nothing to do until someone appeared. No, not a demon but the one-eyed turtle. This one-eyed turtle is huge and feared by all creatures of the ocean. All those fishes were now running for their lives. However, they were saved when the turtle's attention got diverted to something more important, a bird on the shore. The human on the shore presented a sea urchin to Cluck so he could feast on it. Although it looked creepy and Cluck was not sure if it was edible however, the only way to find that out was by eating it, so he took a bite. Just as Cluck took a bite, for the first time, his facial expressions changed. He couldn't believe just how good it tasted. A single bite took him to cloud nine. To him it tasted like it had the flavor of a hundred worms and hundred stink bugs. Tears of joy came in his eyes as he was so glad to be able to taste it. His joy was cut short when the one-eyed turtle arrived and acquired the reason for Cluck trespassing on his territory. Cluck turned around and saw this huge turtle whose one eye was scratched, and his expressions gave away his clear intent of killing Cluck. The turtle gave Cluck a chance of saving his life in exchange for him leaving immediately as he despised birds. Sigma Cluck, obviously, refused and told him that he cannot leave because, without a shred of embarrassment, he admitted that he cannot swim. Then he proceeded to ask the turtle that if this actually is his turf, he must know every nook and cranny of it, for instance, where the sea urchins reside. The turtle could believe the audacity of Cluck on how he responded to the death threat by asking for sea urchins. Turtle thought that maybe Cluck was just trying to act tough, so he, once again, threatened him to get lost, immediately. Cluck took the threat seriously and told the turtle that he wants to stuff himself with sea urchins, so kindly bring some to him. The turtle was now boiling in anger as no one had ever disrespected him this much, therefore, no more chances, he promised Cluck a fight, now he was going to get one. The turtle charged towards Cluck with great speed to deliver his deadly turtle tank attack. Cluck, on the other hand, managed to dodge the attack. By this attack, Cluck realized that this was no ordinary turtle and the turtle realized that Cluck was no ordinary bird. Still, our Sigma Rooster is not someone who backs down from a fight. Yet, he is someone who needs a motive for his actions, so he put forth a deal. If Cluck wins, he wants the turtle to bring him the sea urchins. Turtle had enough of Cluck and his constant sea urchins demand. Therefore he smashed the big rock by his side and all the pieces of rocks were directed towards Cluck. 
With ease, Cluck dodged all the rocks and simultaneously launched a counterattack. The resonance, only this time, with less frequency so he does not kill the turtle. The one-eyed turtle was no ordinary fighter as well. He too, dodged the attack with ease. However, he was surprised by the magnitude of his attack and was also intrigued as the fight was getting interested. This time, he went for a direct smash on Cluck to which Cluck jumped aside and got on top of his shell but before he could attack, Turtle went for another smash forcing Cluck to forfeit his attack. The fight continued with neither side giving up and even after multiple head-on encounters, the battle could not reach a decision until the turtle noticed something and stopped the fight. A hook had penetrated Cluck's leg and all this time, he has been fighting with an injured leg. Turtle's pride was higher than fighting and defeating an injured bird. Therefore, he ended the fight. He got closer to Cluck and used his mouth to remove the hook from Cluck's leg. Cluck thanked him while all one-eyed turtle could think was whether Cluck had been holding back during the fight. On the other hand, Cluck was thinking that if this fight took place in water rather than on land, where the turtle would have advantage, he would undoubtedly have lost to the turtle. As both calmed down, Cluck asked him why he did not like the birds. The turtle shared that sea turtles like him are born on the beach and struggle out of the sand towards the ocean, as if the ocean calls them to it. Similarly, all he had in his mind was the ocean and just when he saw his destination so close to him, the seagulls appeared. One by one, the seagulls plucked his siblings and feasted on them. The sight of his siblings getting eaten up brutally was his first ever real-world experience, something he could never forget. He, on the other hand, managed to escape somehow and swore to avenge all his brothers and sisters that were killed. For the next three years, he stayed away from shore and trained himself and ultimately, got strong enough that he took the revenge for all his fallen siblings. Now, seagulls do not even dare to approach this beach. Cluck shared that he has seen hell as well, when his sister was killed by a thing called demon, and he would never forget the one with that mark on his neck, and one of these days, he was sure to be taking him down. Then, at some distance, from the waters, came the same chaotic sound that Cluck is now used to of hearing. A demon had appeared and taken, in her grip, a whole ship. This time it was a huge, snake-like demon with fish limbs who was crying for how the demon she loved and was with for ten years, did not leave his wife for her. As soon as the demon appeared, Cluck rushed towards it, however, it was far in the ocean and Cluck cannot swim. Meanwhile, the demon was tightening its grip. Turtle offered help to Cluck by letting him ride on his back while he swims. With their pace, it was clear that they would not be able to make it, so Turtle asks Cluck to grab his hand and smashed him towards the demon with full power. Just when the demon was about to feast on the people and ship, Cluck used the resonance and then started spinning midair, and like a cannon, he passed through the demon, leaving a giant hole in her body and killing it right then and there. Then he proceeded to check if she had the mark on her neck, which she did not. Afterwards, Turtle brought Cluck back to the shore where he asked for Cluck's name, to which he said that Keiji which means roosters will in Japanese. Even though Cluck was a bird, Silver liked him and asked him to come by again once he has avenged his sister so they could be sparring partners. Cluck accepted his proposal and before leaving, he asked Turtle for a favor. Sea urchins. <clears throat> the story shifts to a town where we see a middle-aged man selling baby chickens or chicks in the market. Among his chicks, there's a small lovely and cute chick, cheering for him. The other chicks try to shut her up but she in turn tries to convince them to encourage dad, the guy selling them. For this act, she was beaten up by other chicks as the man she was supporting was selling them and they did not like that. Apparently, want to buy some chicks isn't a phrase appreciated by people, so police arrived and gave him the final warning to not sell in this market anymore. The man returned home and put out the bird food in their cage. The lively chick got excited to eat but was kicked out by other chicks due to the event that happened during the day. She sat alone in a corner, about to lose consciousness from starving but the kind man, whom she called dad picked him up and put her out of the cage and fed her separately. Later that night, that man was casually having a drink while watching TV with that baby chick sitting on his lap. That's when the chick noticed that this cool guy in the movie, the main character, had the same tattoo on his back like her dad. This tattoo of a carp climbing a waterfall was called Koi no Takinabori which symbolized trying to be a good person. Baby chick got excited and pointed towards her back, hinting that she wants this tattoo as well. The kind man picked up a marker and wrote on her back, the word morality. He dedicated this word to her and explained that it means protecting the weak and not fearing the strong. Suddenly, something on the back of man's neck started hurting. There was a huge boil that wasn't there before. The next day, other chicks again picked on the baby chick, who by the way, was smaller than all others. The reason was the word written at her back. She tried to explain that it was a special word written by dad but before she could, the man came back home with another person, carrying the dad on his shoulder. The baby chick's precious dad, whose name is Yasuo, had his face all swollen and the man carrying him was his brother Tajima. The reason of getting beaten up was that Yasuo did not make timely payments to the gang, 
and he was lucky that all he got was a beating, instead of being forced to sell his organs. Yasuo realized that he needs a different source of income as selling chicks do not make enough money. Upon hearing this, Tajima shared that he was considering starting up a company, a cleaning company, so Yakuza can finally earn through legitimate work. As Tajima lights up the cigarette, he suggested becoming executive partners, that way the money problems would soon go away. Yasuo, upon hearing the kind proposal, broke down in tears. Tajima smiled and told him that he is just doing what a brother should do. Baby Chick didn't really understand but was happy that Yasuo finally has found a way to make his life better. However, Tajima did ask for one favor in return. Several days later, Yasuo was casually watching TV when he heard the knock at door. Two strangers, dressed up in black suits, told Yasuo that Tajima has escaped and now Yasuo must return the 10 million yen Tajima borrowed because he is the guarantor for Tajima. This was the favor that Tajima asked for Yasuo to become Tajima's guarantor. Yasuo could not believe it, he froze in shock. The stranger told him that he should never have trusted a Yakuza. This betrayal triggered an unfortunate memory from Yasuo's past when his mother told him that she will be home a little late but never returned and ran off with another guy. All the children at school made fun of Yasuo by calling him abandoned child, outcast and trash. The anger that Yasuo had always kept in his heart pushed him over the edge this time and the boil at the back of his neck started growing. Even though the baby chick tried to bring Yasuo back to his senses, it was too late. The boil expanded until Yasuo, the kind man, turned into a merciless demon. Meanwhile, a few streets away, at a restaurant, a mother is feeding her son's favorite sea urchin to him. At the glass window beside the boy's seat is a desperate rooster drooling at the sight of sea urchin. Yup, that is our boy, Cluck, who just scared a small boy. That's when Cluck heard the noise from a few blocks away, where Yasuo transformed into a monster. Yasuo turned into a large creepy four-legged monster with middle body of a fish and top body of a man with horns. Baby Chick tried to stop the rampage by calling him out, but her efforts were of no use. Just as a bus full of people was about to get eaten, Cluck came to the rescue. Up till now, each demon had their own cry. The slogan of this demon was that he is not trash. Cluck, by the brief experience he had with him, figured that he actually is trash and decided to end him right away. Just as he was about to use resonance, he heard the cries of a baby chick, yelling not to hurt her dad. This came as a surprise for Cluck. The demon tried to use this moment of hesitation to his advantage, but Cluck dodged his attack and proceeded with resonance. The demon's face started swelling and before it bursts, Cluck picked the baby chick and brought her to a safe distance. The baby chick then witnessed the person whom she called Dad, the kind man who would always take care of her, have his head blown right in front of her. She tried to wake him up as the dead body of demon falls on the ground, but Cluck informs her that he will never move again. However, a strange thing happened, Yasuo's body had already separated from the demon, and he was lying unconscious on the other side, still alive. Cluck figured that the reason he did not die was that Kiju did not spread all the way to his heart, maybe because of the presence of Baby Chick, whom he held so dear. The Baby Chick just realized that Cluck was not trying to kill Yasuo, he was actually trying to save him, he was protecting the weak and not fearing the strong, the morality. Baby Chick felt something weird inside, a strange and new feeling in her heart. She turned around and saw Cluck already leaving as he had no business left here. Baby Chick is now confused, conflicting between following her heart and going with Cluck or keeping her peaceful life with her pops. That's when Yasuo told her to get the one she loves. Filled with tears, Baby Chick ran towards Cluck while thanking Yasuo for everything he has done. Seeing her approaching Cluck, he gave her a deadly stare, saying how he despises kids. But Baby Chick was one stubborn chick, so she followed him regardless. Tajima was caught the next day. Then we see another disgusting one-eyed demon who was about to spread chaos but within a few seconds, he was electrocuted by Thunderbird, a black and stylish rooster with some advanced weapons and is a totally new appearance in the story. Up till now, we only knew of one rooster who was out hunting the demons but there's another one now. The baby chick is now wandering alone in the town. Cluck was too fast to be chased by her and she lost him. Now she is just running here and there, nagging how mean Cluck is to be leaving such a cute girl alone. All this running made her hungry so she decided to take a meal break. She came across a worm and was disgusted by even the thought that adult chickens just casually eat this thing. She decided to settle for something that would not disgust her, plants. Afterwards, she set out to search again. The baby chick heard a noise and saw people running away from something and figured that another terrifying monster has appeared. First, she got scared then she started running towards the area where the demon appeared hoping that Cluck might come to save the day, as always. This demon was a huge, slimy, four-eyed snail-like demon with four eyes that could extend away from the body, and each eye had its own mouth, yep, creepy as hell. It caught a woman and gave her a riddle, saying that if she gives the right answer, she will be spared. This way, the demon could enjoy the misery of its prey. 
The riddle was that if that woman is in a race and she passes the runner in last place, what position is she now? The woman gave the obvious answer, second last but creepy demon started laughing saying that you cannot pass the one already in last place. With that, the demon gripped the woman with its tongue but before it could eat her, Cluck arrived. Cluck freed her by striking the monster's tongue and now all his attention was on Cluck. To put Cluck into his place, the demon unleashed the tiny yet creepy worm-like structures from his body, each having its own disgusting mouth. Even these tiny worms were triple the size of Cluck. Fight began and Cluck had to fight multiple worms at one, each trying to attack from his blind spot. Cluck dodged them all with his great speed and as soon as he got a safe distance between him and the demon, he used resonance. Half of the monster's body got affected and burst. However, something strange happened. The monster didn't die and recovered the body that popped. Within a few seconds, the monster was as good as new. The fight continued. Monster would keep throwing attacks while Cluck, dodging all of them and using resonance but the monster keeps healing itself over and over again and giving that annoying smirk every time it healed. Cluck was trying to figure out the reason why his attack was not working against this disgusting creature. Turns out, the reason was that his heart and brain is not in the front part of his body, instead, they are in his tail. Cluck knew exactly what he needed to do. He filled himself up with a large breath and used resonance, except that this time, he used it multiple times from different angles. So the whole body of this demon gets a hit. This way, wherever his heart and brain are, he would not be able to heal. This strategy worked and Cluck blew this monster as well. Baby Chick had been watching this fight and was relieved when Cluck finally defeated it. However, multiple resonance did take a toll on Cluck's health and just as he was about to fall, one of the creepy eyes of Demon fell near that woman from before and was about to kill her before dying itself. Cluck ran to her aid and saved her by kicking her away and taking her spot. The teeth of that monster penetrated Cluck and he was severely injured. Our hero, covered in blood, went unconscious. That is when the baby chick came to his rescue. She dragged Cluck to a safe, secluded place, brought her water and food. By food, I mean the worm that she was disgusted by before, only this time, it didn't matter to her. All she could think about was getting Cluck healthy and back on his feet. The innocent baby chick running around in the scorching heat and even the rainy days, escaping from the insects or eagles that would try to prey on her, kept taking care of Cluck for days to get him back on his feet. After a few days, Cluck finally woke up and saw that baby chick, covered in bruises, sleeping by her side. Our hero is not a heartless fellow despite his heartless expressions, and he was moved by what the baby chick did for him. However, thanking someone for a good deed like normal people, Cluck cannot do that either, so he asked the baby chick to train herself and that he would only take her with him if she can keep up with him. Cluck was suddenly attacked from above by a thunder rod, which he dodged and in front of him was the attacker, the black rooster from before, who seemed to have a long unforgotten rivalry with Cluck and was here to kill him. Cluck, on the other hand, did not seem to remember who this black rooster was, and it did not matter to him, because he is not someone who backs out from a fight. Cluck inquired the reason for which the black rooster wanted to kill him, turns out, it was not a rooster but a hen. She shared how her life had always been peaceful since she was a hatchling. The rich family that adopted her took great care of her and she would learn all sorts of tricks just to see them smile. However, somewhere in her heart, she felt something missing. Then, one day, a huge six-armed ballerina demon appeared in their town and just as it was about to crush Black Hen's family, Cluck appeared and within no time, he defeated the demon. The hen, who goes by the name Elizabeth, fell in love with him at first sight. Cluck and Elizabeth walked down the beach, alone at night, sharing their stories under the bright moon. In the soothing sound of waves and cold breeze of air, while moonlight striking the water, they both spent a romantic night together. Elizabeth realized that the missing piece of puzzle in her heart was the chance to love someone and she felt lucky to have fallen in love with Keiji. But then, Keiji got up and started to leave. Elizabeth tried to stop him, but the next town awaited Keiji. To Elizabeth, it was love while to Keiji, it was just a moment of weakness when he gave in to his animal instincts. That's what he says to himself after every one night stand. Just like that, Keiji walked away, without even looking back, he left Elizabeth in tears. This is why Elizabeth wants to kill Keiji, the punishment for stomping on her heart is death. Baby Chick was shocked to know that this strong and beautiful hen is actually Keiji's ex-girlfriend. All this while, Keiji kept listening with the straight face he always has and still could not understand why that one night stand was such a big deal to her. Elizabeth responded, just as Keiji deserved, with a killing blow. Sneaky Keiji managed to dodge all her attacks and instead of retaliating, he would just try to flee. 
Elizabeth took out her thunder baton which was charged with 10 million volts and tried to turn Keiji into a roasted chicken. No matter how hard Elizabeth tried, she was not able to land a hit on Keiji, so she tried to use her trump card, thunder machine gun attack in which she hits the enemy with her baton so fast that it would seem to them that they are facing a machine gun. Keiji dodged this attack as well and with each attempt to hit, he came closer to Elizabeth and finally got a hold of her. This took Elizabeth by surprise, but little did she know, the real surprise was about to come. Our guy Keiji is a big fan of never let them know your next move and he proved that by giving Elizabeth, in the middle of the fight, a kiss. The kiss brought back all those feelings that Elizabeth was trying to suppress. Keiji then stepped back, saying that she never intended to kill him. So there is no use to this fight and ultimately, people in the vicinity were bothered and called cops to drive away these chickens. Seeing the cops, all three of them ran away, Keiji, Elizabeth and the baby chick who was still shocked at the kiss she saw. Once they got to a safe place, in the woods, Baby Chick started yelling at Elizabeth for how she tried to steal her man. Now Elizabeth was the one more shocked, how could the one she loves, be so cheap to be involved with underage baby chicks? Keiji however, cleared that he has no such hobbies. Elizabeth then calmed down and shared that the reason she began her journey was not the intent of chasing Keiji, but to exterminate all the demons from this world. Even though Keiji saved her family, many of her friends died and a major part of the town was destroyed. This was not limited to her town and many parts of the country were facing similar problems, so she set out to free the world from these demons. Keiji, on the other hand, had no such goal, all he wants is to avenge his sister. Keiji shared this with Elizabeth on that night as well, six months ago. Elizabeth then brings out a phone from her carry bag and told Keiji that she has been researching demons for a while now, and there is a lot of information that she has gathered in this device that most of the humans carry. Demons have been appearing for three years and destructive dumb demons were usually red and blue until recently when variants have started to appear. These variants show human-like emotions, some attack humans, some remain on their own without bothering anyone and some even provide help to humans as much as they can. They come in all colors, green, brown, and purple etc. However, what she really wanted to show Keiji was a video going viral online which showed a huge, by far the biggest four-horned demon with a white body. There were no sights of a white body before. The white demon destroyed the town with just his right hand as he swung it in the air, and a bird-shaped fire emerged from his hand and destroyed everything. To Keiji's surprise, the bird that emerged had the same face as Sarah, his sister, and the mark he was searching for was on this white demon's neck. Keiji has finally found the demon he was looking for but is he strong enough to finish a demon who could destroy a whole town with just a swing of his hand? Then we are shown a peaceful and quiet place outside the city. Three of them used Elizabeth's mobile's navigation system to find a place where they could relieve their tiredness. The map brought them to a hot spring. The water of these springs is said to be good for healing wounds. Keiji stands at the bank of spring, reluctant to go inside. Elizabeth inquired why he was not entering the water. Our brave Keiji had to make something sure before entering which is how much deep the water was. Elizabeth burst out in laughter. A fighter who defeats monsters ten times his size does not even know how to swim, so pathetic. Keiji, the Sigma Rooster, tried to turn situation around by asking why he is required to swim when all his life will be on land. Elizabeth had the perfect answer to his question, a kick that threw Keiji into the water. Keiji cried for help, throwing away his arms trying to save himself from drowning, until he realized that water's depth is about half of his height, so he put his serious expressions back on and complimented the water. Elizabeth then threw a wet towel on Keiji's and her head and got into the water. She remembered the time when she used to have a nice drink a hot tub with a view of ocean right in front, before setting out for this journey. She promised herself to celebrate this way once all demons are exterminated. Baby Chick then got closer to Keiji and asked him to give her a name. Keiji instantly came up with Pioko that translates as little chicken. Elizabeth tried to protest to make Keiji think a little before just giving a name like that, but Pioko was happy with it. To her, this was the name given by her husband and she would always treasure it. Elizabeth asked about the morality written on her back and with a rude face, Pioko replied that her dad wrote this on her back, so she always helps the people in trouble. Reason of rudeness is that kiss from earlier. Pioko's eyes filled with tears as she remembered her father and started running away, calling out her dad. But then she came back, saying that she has decided to follow Keiji, so there is no time to look back. Few hours later, Keiji is lying almost unconscious and Pioko is trying to keep him conscious. Apparently, Keiji spent too much time in the water and got burnt. Suddenly a small-sized monster appeared in front of these two and just stood there. Just as Keijo was about to attack, some of the mud fell down from Demon's face and turns out, it was just Elizabeth taking a mud bath. Sun was setting, Pioko was in middle of her nap and Elizabeth and Keiji stood beside the lake talking about the white demon, how he seemed so different from the time Keiji saw him, and that bird of fire, in that moment, it seemed like his sister Sarah. 
but he is not very sure now. Maybe he isn't the one Keiji had been looking for. Elizabeth answered that these demons are evolving, so a few drastic changes should not surprise them and the mark on his neck is a big enough proof. They should get to the white demon first and figure out the rest later. While they were talking, a cat appeared and ran away after taking Pioko in her mouth. Elizabeth and Keiji immediately noticed the disappearance and started chasing the cat that took Pioko. Keiji had a great sense of smell, so he knew which direction to run. Meanwhile, Pioko kicked the cat to free herself and hid in a hole. The cat tried to snatch her out, but before that, Keiji and Elizabeth arrived at the scene. Cat was ready to fight both the chickens for her prey and just as the fight was about to begin, Cat's babies came running to her hoping that their mom had finally found some food. The reason Cat kidnapped Pioko was to feed her children. This melted Elizabeth's heart who was due of laying an egg anyway, so she did, and the small kittens finally got something to eat. What's strange was that this cat seemed to be a domestic cat, yet they were starving. When asked why their owner did not feed them, Cat turned her head down and before she could explain, Keiji saw something really weird. The people of the town by this roadside, probably where the cat lived as well, were digging holes. Not just the men but women and elderly were also consistently digging, and it was clear that none of those people were in their right minds. The cat told them that it was all a doing of that monster that appeared ten days ago. The reason was not clear, but he forced everyone to dig holes across the town. That monster currently resides in a mansion just outside of the town. Cat was more worried about the town's children who were locked in a shed and left to starve. The scene shifts to the shed where the children were locked. Say, the eldest among them realized that they would not be able to survive if they did not escape. Hence, with the help of other children, he used a ladder to break open the locked door and held the man who was guarding the door to the ground. He ordered everyone to run away while he holds this person down. However, a policeman, who was also under the influence of that demon, pulled out his gun and decided to kill Say for making this attempt to break out. Just as his finger was about to pull the trigger, Elizabeth electrocuted him and the other man as well. Then she pulled out the smartphone and through the means of typing, she communicated with the children, asking them to tie both of these men before they regain their consciousness. The kids were shocked at the sight of a hen casually using a smartphone. The cat and Say led everyone to Say's house where he found some instant noodles, cooked them for everyone and for now, the problem of starvation was dealt with. The police from outside the town had not come to their rescue as the town's policeman was forced to keep everything a secret. This demon was a smart one. Elizabeth tried to ask the children about any valuable information they could provide about the monster but as they were locked up, they did not have anything to share. Elizabeth then asked Keiji to accompany her to the demon's mansion tomorrow to which Keiji refused, saying that he is only interested in avenging his sister. Suddenly, drum noises go out in Keiji's head which indicated that the Lord of Rut had arrived. This is what he named the extreme natural urges he feels once or twice a year. He immediately threw himself at Elizabeth who kicked him away. Then she decided to use this chance to her advantage and agreed to help Keiji with his problem if he agrees to accompany her to Demon's Mansion tomorrow. Keiji agreed. Later that night, when everyone was sleeping, Sei was wide awake, holding a picture of his family, thinking about something. In the morning, when everyone woke up, Sei had already disappeared. The kids told Elizabeth that maybe he went to the demon's mansion. A sane person would never do such a thing, so why did Say go there? Because, the demon was none other than his father. Say entered the mansion and began confronting this huge, ugly, zipper body demon and ordered him to return his father while pointing a gun at him. With a finger's touch, he threw Say away and then opened one of the many zips on his body, behind which was Say's father. Say's father was still half-conscious, apparently getting closer to accomplishing some dream he had. Previously, Say's father had lost all the money while betting at horse races and even raised a debt 5 million yen upon himself. Say tried to put some sense into him many times, but he just liked to live in a fool's paradise. Then, on a random tip, Say's father went to look for the underground casino and, on his way, he slipped and came across an old chest with a treasure map inside. He studied and decoded the map by himself and got a clue that somewhere beneath this town is a hidden treasure. At this moment, a boil emerged at the back of his neck just like the one on Pioko's father's neck. After a year of digging, he couldn't find anything and when he lost all hope, the boil expanded and transformed Sei's father into a monster. Sei was trying to rescue his father from the monster, but his father did not want to be rescued and got himself zipped back in. The demon grew in size and before he could kill Sei, Keiji, Elizabeth and Pioko came to the rescue. This too was a variant demon who tried to use his big eye to hypnotize Keiji and the gang like the people this town, but Elizabeth saved herself and Keiji. Pioko, however, got hypnotized and started digging. Elizabeth then tried to electrocute him, but the voltage was too low for him and whenever Keiji approached him, he would open a zip from the side he approached, giving no window to attack. Keiji even tried his resonance attack, but the demon was too fast for it to work. He would just dodge the resonance attack. 
trying to figure out a way to kill him while constantly looking for windows to attack. Elizabeth was finally struck with an idea. She asked KG to lead him towards a power station of the town so she could borrow some voltages and direct them towards the monster. The plan worked and the demon was momentarily paralyzed. This window was used by KG to use resonance to blow the monster and finally, they won. The hypnosis wore off and everyone got back to their senses. KG instantly reminded Elizabeth about the promise she made and Elizabeth, like a clever hen, denied making any such promise and refused to fulfill his desire. The rooster got angry and used it to put some sense into Say's father by targeting K of his resonance. Seeing his son hurting, Say's father finally realized that it was his son that meant the most to him, not some unattainable treasure. The Lord of Rut went back and Keiji won both physical and emotional battle as he was able to bring out the good in Say's father. This battle revealed the fact that Keiji might be strong but the white demon is still way above his league so the question is, how far does this rooster need to go? And that's how the first part of this manual ends, well guys. If you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word rooster also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.